This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 3rd day of August in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. The government of Guyana is continuing its fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. And with effect from the 8th of August, all foreign passengers will have to be vaccinated to be allowed entry into Guyana. The foreign passengers will have to provide their vaccination card to the airlines before their departure for Guyana. Minister of Works Bishop Juan Edgel, who overlooks the aviation sector, explained a new source today that Guyanese nationals coming into the country will not be locked out, but their vaccination will be facilitated on arrival at the airports. All incoming passengers will still be required to present a negative PCR COVID-19 test result. Intent if they have been living overseas. They should be vaccinated. But if they arrive here as a guy on a Guyanese passport, we will not turn them away. We will facilitate their vaccination on arrival. The issue about vaccination is to protect people. That's that's the big issue here, the protection of people. So we would not want to deny a Guyanese access to Guyana, but we would expect a Guyanese who's living overseas, not when for vacation, living overseas, would have been vaccinated. Mr. Edgel said the airlines and travel agents are already being guided and briefed about the new requirements for incoming passengers. The Guyana Civil Aviation Authority and the Chetty Jagan Airport have been dispatching the information to those in the aviation and travel sector. The Public Works Minister also added that Guyanese nationals who are currently abroad on vacation should not worry since their vaccination will also be facilitated upon arrival at the airport. No, no, they will be facilitated on arrival. No Guyanese will be locked out of Guyana, sir. Just to <laughs> give the assurance, the travel agents and airlines are receiving their direct advisories from the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority. The Chetty Jagan International Airport Corporation has also been engaging the airlines. And if you would have noted that I indicated last night while people were concerned that the orders will not take effect with a date that is current, but I've given notice from the 8th, which means people who would have already bought tickets and would have been in the process of traveling and so on. We know there would have been some disruptions, but we want to encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Guyana is among several countries putting vaccination requirements in place for incoming passengers. News source understands that a person will be considered vaccinated once that person received the first dose of one of the vaccines to fight COVID-19. Additionally, those persons who mix their vaccine dosages with two different brands of the vaccine will also be considered to be fully vaccinated and allowed entry. More news coming up in just a moment. What's our purpose? Together we rise. For our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises strengthen our community, reliably connect our customers, innovate for all in our country. Together we rise. A message from Republic Bank. Primart, a pioneering app designed with you in mind. Whether it's a vital service or hard to find product, your days of relentless probing across social media are over. Guymart provides a holistic database of essential businesses ranging from healthcare to restaurants and even jewelers. 
With one generalized search, we provide the closest businesses according to your location, as well as their ongoing sales, events, and vacancies. Your shopping experience will be effortlessly transformed. GuyMart's heavy traffic provides a golden opportunity to advertise promotions on our homepage directly below our search bar. The enlistment process is simple. A small monthly fee affords you a profile to unite your business with a ready consumer market. GuyMart, where your shopping search begins. Jungle Jam! Jungle Jam! Jungle Jam! Find as many as you can! Jungle Jam! or more and collect the letters to spell the word R-U-S-H for a chance to win one of three brand new Toyota Rush SUVs. Yes, you heard it right. Three brand new Toyota Rush SUVs. Drive in style for the summer. Hey, did you sell Summer Rush? Start topping up now. GBTI, make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely, apply online, or call your branch to schedule an appointment. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. Several staff members of the Maritime Administration Department who are still to be vaccinated against COVID-19 were sent home this morning and told that they should only return to their jobs when they get vaccinated. Additionally, they will not be paid for their days away from work. Staff members of the Maritime Administration Department's headquarters were called to a meeting this morning where they were informed of the department's new requirements for staff members by the Director General Stephen Thomas. New source was told that the staffers were not given the option of being regularly tested for the virus, but were told clearly that they must stay away from work until they are vaccinated. The Mara Director General told managers at the government department that his decision is based on the government's gasseted order, which speaks the persons who are unvaccinated not being allowed to visit a government ministry or agency unless they have an appointment. The gazetted government order does not make it mandatory for staff members at government ministries or agencies to be vaccinated in order to be at work. The move by the Marriott Director General came as a surprise to staffers, but they said that he made it clear that the requirement is now in place and they can choose to get vaccinated or remain at home and lose their salaries for those days at home. When contacted by news source, Marriott Director General Stephen Thomas said he is following the government order and guidelines. We are complying with the government policy as it said and it's stated on the government. We call the government um, um, policy, government order but the government order speaks to persons visiting uh, these government agencies and government ministries and gives them the option of if they're not vaccinated, they be made to make an appointment before coming in. So I'm trying to understand that as against uh, your decision to send the staffers home without pay uh, until they become vaccinated. 
As I said, all our recordings are on the website, Tom Card. Uh, so you're not budging from the position? Well, I can do that and tell you what we did. It's not a matter of budging from position. I'm just to give you a factual statement of what we did. No, no, but I'm trying to understand what has informed that position because the government well, order, and I'm looking I, at it now. I quoted, I, I quoted the government order and um, in, in our um, notice, and, as I said, and had stated in the, on the website. The Maritime Administration Department overlooks operations in the maritime sector. Those public transportation operators in the maritime sector are now required to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Well, with the Education Ministry looking at the possible reopening of schools for face-to-face -face learning in September, the Chief Education Officer has written to all regional education officers and the Principal Education Officer requesting information on the number of teachers who have been vaccinated. In a memo seen by News Source, Chief Education Officer Marcel Hudson indicated that the Ministry of Education is currently in the process of crafting a policy towards the reopening of schools. He has requested information on the number of teachers who have received at least one dose of one of the COVID-19 vaccines. The Chief Education Officer also wants to know the potential student capacity of each school on the COVID-19 seating guidelines. Head teachers are being asked to provide the information by noon tomorrow. With schools closed for face-to-face -face learning for more than a year, Education Minister Priya Manikchan has said the Ministry of Education will be guided by the Ministry of Health on the reopening of schools. President Irfan Ali on Monday encouraged teachers to get vaccinated, stating that the nation's children should not be exposed to unvaccinated teachers. I think teachers has the greatest responsibility to lead. And I'm hoping that they provide that leadership and that they get vaccinated. We surely cannot expose the children to unvaccinated teachers. And I'm sure the teachers are responsible enough to understand this and understand the importance of vaccination. I've already made it clear that we are pursuing the Pfizer vaccines and when that comes it will be made available to children and once it's available to children we expect children to take it beginning with the older children on social media some teachers express concern about being vaccinated and still being exposed to unvaccinated children and their parents Turning now to the world of politics, President Irfan Ali on Monday made it clear that the opposition leader must first recognize the legitimacy of his presidency and the government before there could be any consultation on the appointment of a chancellor and the chief justice. Under the Constitution of Ghana, there must be consultation and agreement between the president and the opposition leader on the appointment of the two top judicial posts. At a press conference to mark his first year in government, President Ali said the opposition leader needs to publicly recognize the government to move the process forward. In, in the case of the Chancellor and Chief Justice, there has to be uh, consultation uh, directly between the President and uh, the leader of the opposition. I know uh, definitively who is the leader of the opposition, and I know definitively who is the President of Ghana. And I'm sure Harmon definitely, definitively knows who also is the leader of the opposition and who is the president. So the, the ball is in his court uh, to do the writing. The Constitution of Guyana does not put the recognition of office requirements in place for the consultation process for the top two judicial posts. But the president insists that there will be no consultation with the leader of the opposition until he recognizes the legitimacy of the government. In an appearance on an online talk show last evening, the opposition leader said the president needs to get serious about the appointments. The Constitution prescribes consultation an engagement between the president and the leader of the opposition. And so he goes on to find the excuse when in fact he should stand up as a man. Stand up as a man. You are in the office of the president, not Barrett Jackio. Stand up and be counted 
The people have you there, you're spending our money. Since taking office, the president has refused to engage with the opposition leader on any issue, although the constitution provides for consultation to take place between the two on several matters. While the president has been holding out on consultations with Mr. Harmon, the government and the opposition consulted recently at the parliamentary level to move ahead with the appointment of the local government commission. A 21-year-old mechanic from Sophia was shot dead last evening by a gunman who opened fire on him as he walked into a yard. A friend of the mechanic was also injured in the attack. The dead youth has been identified as Julie Liao of Dennis Street, Camberville. According to a police report, just before 6 p.m. on Monday, the mechanic was in the company of three other friends, including a female shopkeeper hanging out on the Beefield Sophia Access Road, when two men identified as Big John and Brenner approached them. The report stated that the two suspects dismounted their bicycles and one of them who was armed with a cutlass approached the young woman, asking her whether she wanted a problem. He come and he asked me, y'all want a problem with me? It's a problem. And then Sian turned to me and said, yeah, pull out two cutlass. We got a problem with y'all. My friend was in the yard, Jail. Jail said, if you want a problem, we want a problem too. Big job pull out the gun. <laughs> and he ran into the yard. And he started shooting my friend. My friend tried to get up. And he continued shooting my friend to get up and run. And he still shooting. Then he come out the yard. He come outside to me. Cause I left in shock. I left standing right there and tell me. When he don't kill all of them, I'll be the last one he take. When the young mechanic started to walk into the yard, the other suspect whipped out a gun and fired several shots at him, hitting him in the back. As he fell to the ground, the gunman approached him and fired more shots even as he attempted to run away. He collapsed again as the gunman fired additional shots. One of the other youths who was limbing at the corner was leaving the scene was also shot at, with a bullet grazing him on one of his hands. The suspects left the scene as the injured youths were taken to the hospital, where Liao was pronounced dead on arrival while his friend was treated and discharged. The two suspects are still to be arrested. Of course I am. He's in my yard, my mom, my children, my nephew. And if you could do it in front, in the bright just like that bright day, they even wait for night bright day time who does that you show how much power he has and then you come out and then you threaten me after all so you're like you're not satisfied you still want more people to die this afternoon a relative of the dead youth explained to news source that a 21 year old mechanic who was gunned down and his friend who was injured in the attack were both witnesses in an ongoing murder case no brandon is a witness they killed brandon brother about less than a year right in his yard and Big John nephew is one of the suspects who has not been caught and he's on the run. So you think that was the reason behind Yes. Okay. Yes. According to the family member, the two were witnesses to the murder of Sapphire resident Kevin Campbell back in 2020. Campbell was the brother of the friend who was injured in last evening's attack. One of the suspects in last evening's deadly shooting in Sophia is a relative of one of the men currently facing trial for that 2020 murder. A 23-year-old Linden man who was reportedly doing stunts at the Buckton Creek in Linden died by drowning on Monday. A police statement said the man, Stephen Major, and a group of his friends were at the creek for an afternoon of relaxation when tragedy struck. As the police report said the man and his friends were seen consuming alcohol moments before they ventured into the water. Once in the creek, the young man started to do diving and plunging stunts. At one stage, the police said, the man plunged into the water but took more than two minutes to resurface. His body was spotted floating a short distance away and the friends rushed to his aid. He was pulled from the creek and CPR was administered. The police said he was taken to the Linden Hospital where he was pronounced dead. There were no marks of violence found on the body, but an official post-mortem examination is to be conducted soon. The mayor of Georgetown, Ubraj Nirain, and his councillors remain unhappy with the appointment of an interim town clerk by the local government commission chairman. Mayor Nirain maintains that the appointment was done unlawfully, pointing out that the chairman of the local government commission made the appointment even before any consultation was done with the other members of the commission or the city council. The mayor said the council will continue to reject the appointment. Dear citizens of Georgetown, we as councillors reject 
and will not respect Ms. Candice Nelson as an interim Tongkwa. There is no way in the laws of the 28 to 1, nor the local government act, or the constitution of this country speak of an interim Tongkwa. The Georgetown mayor said there is some clear political motive behind the appointment, since the more experienced and knowledgeable acting town clerk, Cherry Jerick, was referred to her substantive position as deputy town clerk. I stated that the local government act did not give him such authority to do the appointment by himself. Meanwhile, the chairman of the local government commission at his own press conference this afternoon defended the appointment of the new interim town clerk. I do have that authority as the chairperson, the chairman of the commission. I would normally make decisions between meetings and at the statutory meeting I will ratify that decision. So my next statutory meeting is going to be at the end of August. And that is where I'll be taking that decision for ratification. Mr. Faber said he has the authority under the Local Government Commission Act to make the appointment. The Local Government Commission Act number 18 of 2013. And we look at Article 30, power to make rules and regulations. And it says the commission may make rules and regulations prescribing all matters which by this act are required or permitted to be prescribed or which are necessary or convenient to be prescribed for the better carrying out of or giving effect to the provisions of this act and in particular for and i'm going to read b the procedures of the commission so that is a part of the act that has given me that authority. The city council is currently engaging its legal counsel on the issue. A move to the courts may be likely. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right what's our purpose together we rise our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises strengthen our community, reliably connect our customers, innovate for all in our country. Together we rise. Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline.
across the region tonight, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines will on this Thursday pilot legislation amending the Public Health Amendment Bill 2021 that it says will now allow for certain categories of public sector employees to be vaccinated in order to work in frontline jobs. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent, Ralph Gonzalez, said given the extent of the misrepresentations and misinformation by some persons about the bill, it is necessary and desirable to put a record straight. He said that it is the intention of the government to make rules under the Public Health Act to require certain categories of employees in the public sector, including those in central government and state enterprises, to take the vaccine in order to work in certain specified frontline jobs. He said the choice of working or not working in a particular job, which requires vaccination in the interest of public health, will be that of the employee. Last Thursday, the main opposition in St. Vincent New Democratic Party staged a street protest against the government's proposed mandatory vaccination law. The widow of the assassinated president of Haiti, Martini Moise, has hinted at the possibility of contesting the elections for president of the CARICOM country. It comes less than a month after her husband, Jovenel Moise, was gunned down at their private residence overlooking the capital of Port-au-Prince. In an interview with the New York Times, Mrs. Moise said President Jovenel had a vision and Haitians are not going to let that vision die. She said she is seriously considering a run for the presidency once she undergoes more surgeries on her wounded arm. Mrs. Moise was flown to Miami for treatment after the assassination of her husband on the 7th of July, but she returned a week before his official funeral. She told the New York Times that those who killed her husband had come to the private residence looking for a particular document. She said they were looking for something in the room and they found it, adding that she did not know what it was. She said that none of the assassins spoke Creole or French, the language associated with Haitians. And finally tonight, international news. The Biden administration has said it will indefinitely extend the Trump-era pandemic policy that allows the U.S. to swiftly expel undocumented migrants. The policy known as Title 42 is aimed at preventing the spread of COVID-19 in holding facilities, officials say. Children and some families are exempt. At least 940,000 people have been expelled since it was issued last year. The decision comes as migrants continue to stream to the U.S. border, including about 210,000 in July alone. In a statement, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said that the policy will remain in effect until the spread of COVID-19 by non-citizens stops being a serious danger to public health. The CDC said it will review the situation every 60 days. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.